We have now been living full time in our Tundra four wheel camper build for an entire year. I have no idea where the year has gone. It has flown by. But now that we've had some time to get to know this build, a little bit of experience living in it and traveling in it, we've actually made quite a few edits. And so in this video, we're gonna be taking you through all the things that we have edited since moving into this vehicle. All of them are things that really just like aid in day-to-day -day life out here on the road in this particular setup. So without further ado, let's dive right on in. The biggest difference between our setup and one straight from four wheel campers is going to be our battery setup. Currently four wheel campers does not offer a lithium option. So we went with just the cheapest battery setup that they had knowing full well that we were going to have to take it out anyways. Instead, we opted for two 100 amp hour lithium batteries from Battleborn, giving us a total of 200 amp hours. Within the battery compartment, we added a 600 watt inverter because the camper didn't come with one at all. We also wired that inverter into the plugs located directly below the battery compartment. We also added a finger hole so we could access the switch to turn on our inverter without having to open the lid because most of the time we have stuff resting on it anyways. Lastly, we swapped out our battery monitor and charge controller for the Victron versions. The reason being is it's a bit easier to monitor the state of charge as well as any sort of solar input using an app on our phone. It also makes it really easy to change any settings in the event that we need to. However, it does need to be said that this setup is still actually a work in progress. To date, we have never received a charge from our alternator. The reason being the charge relay that comes from the factory doesn't work with lithium batteries. In order for us to get that setup up and running, we need to get a new relay put in place that works well with the lithium battery setup. As of now, we have been totally fine this entire year not receiving a charge from the alternator and just relying 100% on our solar. If you are interested in some of the more specific parts that we used in the edits to our electrical system, we will be sure to toss all the specific names and links to those products in the description of this video below. While on the topic of power, we have to talk about our Overland Solar 120 watt bug out panel. We recently picked this bad boy up and it immediately became the workhorse of our power setup. The reason why it's so great is we can park the camper in the shade, keeping the camper cooler, our refrigerator not working as hard, and drag it out into the sun to be collecting power. Another reason why we absolutely love it is we can put it in our windshield like a sunscreen and leave it plugged in if we're in a library, out and about doing errands, all while collecting power, keeps the cab cooler, win, 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 a million times win. It's amazing, we love it. The next edit is actually something that we've done in nearly every single one of our rigs that we have ever had, and that is adding tiny little bookshelves and little storage pockets. The reason why these are super handy is it turns otherwise unusable real estate in to storage, and storage is king when you live on the road. We only carry a few books due to weight, and those books are gonna be sketchbooks or our Kindles, and these little bookshelves make all of those things really accessible. I made this little storage pocket for all the odds and ends that we frequently find ourselves using when sitting in the dinette area. So that's gonna be anything from a koozie, a coaster, our hotspot, or random charging cords. On a somewhat related note about weight. The reason why we don't carry a ton of books around is that they're heavy and they add up really quickly. You have to be conscious of weight when you're filling your rig because you pay for every single pound you drive around every time you go to the pump. The reason why we love Kindles is we can have hundreds of books in less than a pound for each of us and that can be anything from cookbooks to trail guides. Our next edit isn't so much an edit and more of just an addition. Uh, this one actually came to us as advice from a couple who has owned a flatbed four wheel camper for years now. And it is that we added a vapor barrier underneath our mattress. Adding a vapor barrier is great because in times of condensation, such as the winter months, it's really important to get the bed off of the bed platform so any sort of condensation can evaporate out from underneath the mattress. 
We recently added the stash organizer from 67 Designs and FCS Fabrication. We did this so all of our navigation tools have a place that they can stay organized and call home all while clearing up our view outside the windshield. This winter we experienced some very cold temperatures which spurred on our next edit, which was to add Reflectix window coverings to all of our glass windows. They're a great way to keep the camper a bit more insulated and our heater not running quite as much at night in those colder months. We really loved adding these and it makes a pretty big difference. When we're not using those window coverings, we keep them under our mattress, but above our vapor barrier. Before we got on the road, right after we purchased this rig, we added a metal plate to the front of our refrigerator using 3M adhesive strips. The reason why we did this is we wanted to make sure that we had a place that we could use magnets to stick some of our Polaroid photos. It's a really great, easy upgrade that makes it really easy to personalize your space. From the factory, we opted out of the cassette toilet and instead got a blank cabinet in its place. In this spot is now the home of Luna's litter box. We used a jigsaw to cut out her little door and added this fun sign so she knows where to do her business. Hooray! That brings us to the end of all of the edits that we have done over the last year while living in this vehicle. I've said it before, there's no such thing as a perfect rig, but we've gotten so close and all of these little edits that we've done are just kind of our way of fine tuning it and turning a truck into a home. Hope that you loved this video. If you did, you should give it a thumbs up. Uh, or you should subscribe, or you should do both. You should definitely do both. And so you can get more videos like this. But until next time, we'll see you down the road. Bye. <laughs>